This is Life Sciences Paper 1 from November 2022. Question 1.4 lets us explore a diagram, but let's read the instruction first. The diagrams below show the condition of the eyes for different light intensities when viewing the same object. So my little diagram would be here is the person and there's their eyes. The one condition would be they are looking at this pot plant object and in the second instance in the first instance there's bright light, in the second instance there's no bright light. But the distance remains the same and it's the same object. So we're not talking about accommodation. If we were going to move the object we would talk about accommodation. But it's the same object. The only difference is the light intensity. We've drawn our little picture. We understand what the question is going to be about. Let's look at our diagrams. Diagram one shows us a pupil at that size. Diagram two shows us a much smaller pupil. Diagram three shows us a much larger pupil. Now, giving that information we have to answer, give the letter and name of the part. So letter for one mark, name for one mark, it's out of two. That contains muscles. Clearly, remember the pupil isn't an object. The pupil is in fact a hole into your eye. The pupil is a gap. And that gap can, can become smaller or wider depending on the amount of light around us. So something has to have muscles in order to change the size of the pupil. Which part has muscles? We're looking at part B. And what is that part? It's the colored part of the eye. And that is the iris. So that is what you write to get your two marks. We have to give the letter and the name of the part that is made up of tough white fibrous tissue. And what do we have? It can't be B, it can't be C which is the pupil, so yes it has to be A which indicates the tissue around the iris. So we're looking at A and what do we call that white fibrous tissue, it is the sclera. Which diagram, one, two or three, represents the eye of a person in a very bright area? So we go back, bright, bright light, we're going to shut down that pupil, we're going to constrict the pupil so that we do not have too much light entering and we're going to damage our retina. So our diagram two, where the rods are stimulated the most. Remember that our photoreceptors are divided into cones and rods. And the cones are there for bright light and color. Our rods are there for dim light and shades shades of, 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 the, um, of what we're seeing rather than colors. So which diagram shows us what we would be seeing in dim light? In dim light, our pupil is going to be dilated in order to allow as much light into that eye as possible so we can see as clearly as possible, but it's going to be diagram which muscles are contracted in diagram 2 and relaxed in diagram 3? So what we need to see here is in diagram 2, the muscles of the iris 
are shutting down the size of the pupil. And in our iris, we've got two kinds of muscles. We've got radial muscles and we've got circular muscles. Now imagine this. When the circular muscles contract, it's going to make our pupil smaller. Think of looking down this pen and putting circular muscles around it and constricting or contracting those muscles. It's going to put pressure on the pen to make it less wide. And if these radial muscles contract, they're going to pull the pupil wider or dilated. So when we're talking about contracted in diagram two, the contracted ones are going to be the circular muscles. So we're going to write which muscles? Circular. Which ones then relax in diagram three? It's also the circular ones because our radial ones are contracted when the circular muscles are relaxed. So the radial muscles will be contracted, the circular muscles will be relaxed, and that is going to dilate the pupil.